about 50% of brain cells are lost in Huntington's disease before uh, the patient starts to even display any symptoms, at all, any motor symptoms at all. Um, and this is associated with their cognitive decline and some psychiatric symptoms as well. So in the pre-symptomatic people that we're looking at at Cardiff, brain imaging is a really interesting tool because you're starting to see these changes in the brain before any obvious symptoms can actually be detected. So that's why we use MRI. So here is an example of a, an MRI scan from one of our patients. And um, if you just see, we're just scrolling through the brain now with the nose up here. And around here you can see the basal ganglia. And the basal ganglia are a set of nuclei in the brain that are responsible for a number of the symptoms that we see, and they're some of the first cells to go. Um, you can also see, um, as we scroll through the brain, as we scroll through the brain, you can see these bits here, these are large ventricles, and those ventricles start to get enlarged um, throughout the disease process. Um, as the atrophy occurs in the grey matter and the white matter around, around the ventricles. Um, another thing that we can see with our Huntington's disease patients is atrophy in the rest of the cortex and some cortical thinning. And you can very slightly detect that in these patients here as well. Uh, so here's an example of an image sort of through their, through their brain that way, if you will. So um, you can see here very slightly um, some grey matter atrophy up at the top here. You can see where you've got these gaps. That's where the grey matter started to sort of pull away from the skull as it's begun to shrink in the cortex. And you can keep flicking through. Um, and you can see sort of around the sides that tends to be the case as well. And these ventricles here, they start to get enlarged as the cells around those ventricles start to, start to atrophy. Here you can see a part of the brain called the corpus callosum and that's the, it's a large uh, white matter bundle that sort of connects both our hemispheres of our brains together and so those connections are really really important in the brain and that's one particular region which we know also starts to atrophy um, in HD as, and the myelin starts to, uh, to shrink away as well. So we use a type of um, imaging called diffusion tensor imaging or DTI uh, to look at the white matter tracts a bit better and start to form a bit more of an understanding about the microstructure of the brain and that's something that's really big at Cardiff University and we're developing a load of methods, a load of pipelines um, for analysing that data in a really unique way to detect really sensitive changes. Um, we've got the new connectome scanner as well just down, just down the corridor and that's one of the only uh, connectomes in the world. So we're really starting to hone our skills in this particular form of imaging um, and doing white matter tractography and that's where we can um, actually uh, detect the, uh, the tracts in the brain um, and, and analyse whether or not they're um, as healthy as they might be um, and whether we can improve that with, for example, an intervention like the research I'm doing or with a drug. Here's just a very rough example. Um, of the tractography we can kind of do at the scanner. So our pipelines that we've developed um, offline are a, a lot more sensitive, but here we can just get a rough and ready idea about the corpus callosum in one of our patients. So here you can see uh, the, white, the corpus callosum arching around here and the, the, uh, the connections that fan out to the cortex from the centre of the brain. And you can see here, you can rotate it in 3D and then you can look at various metrics um, like fractional isotropy or diffusivity in the brain which kind of suggests how healthy those axons are um, and that's something we're really working on at the moment. We don't discuss the scans with the patients, unlike the hospital where they might go for a neurological referral, um, they might find out the outcome of their assessments through their neurologist. So what we aren't is a neuroradiologist, we're researchers, so we've got very specific questions. So we aren't in a position where we can tell them how fast or how slow the progression of their disease is going. Um, but what we can tell them and what we really want to do is as soon as we get, uh, we've analysed the data and formed publications, to disseminate that to the public as well as the scientific community. So uh, for, for the most part, they just kind of have to wait until the results have been published, which is why it's so important that this research is getting out there, because there's so very little MRI research in Huntington's disease at the moment.